Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. We are live, large and in charge on this Thursday morning. We couldn't be even more in charge than with the gentleman sitting next to me, a music icon and legend of our time. My word. Ndadesi, poor hot sticks. My boo in the studio, ladies and gentlemen! Deserving of the ancestral ululation. Oh, You know, uh, it, it would be most <coughs> inappropriate of me because every, to not start just by complimenting you on, on your style. I, I don't even want to call it swagger. But every single time you go you got style that's a way to call timeless. it that's It's timeless. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what inspires your style? I don't know. It's, yeah? I, I guess it's just growing up, you know, around people who always say, well-dressed. I mean, I come from a generation of people who were always Just thinking, super stylish. You know, how do you go out there and look shabby and, mm, you know? Mm, mm, mm. So my father was uh, my role model in the way I, I should present myself today, yeah. you know? Speaking of a role model, yeah. uh, we lost a role model yesterday in Jabulani Tambo. It's a most painful Jamba. moment for this country. Yeah. Very yeah. painful moment for this country. Had you had an opportunity? And for me, yeah. for me, you know, having known him, not only as a musician, but as very close to the family, because I, I went to school with all his uh, family members, his father, his mom, his uncles. You know, he was more like a family wow. to me. Wow, And uh, every time we meet, I'd be, we'd be talking about family stuff, yeah, more yeah. than the music. Yeah. And, you know, I couldn't believe it when I heard the news that he's passed on. And I tried to get through to Lerato, but unfortunately, obviously, understandably so, of course. she could not uh, get back to me. Of on, course. Yeah. Well, what, what's your fondest memory of Jabba? Because I think we, we all have one. Now I remember Saturday. Oh, okay, man. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the best things that yeah. every time I see him, I'd be saying, <laughs> did, 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 you, did you do it like that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you say, Gwen! Ah. Yeah, and yeah. With sticks. Mama Salo says this. You, you know, Adam, some of his... Yeah, yeah. One of his aunts, uh, Selena, you know, was in the States. And the other one is in, in Scotland. And I still have to get back and talk to the family to find out exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right. But reflecting on, on, on more happier news, I mean, you have had a stunning career, one that I think the likes of Jabba would have been hoping to um, kind of model going forward, the achievements, the awards that have come your way. Uh, what, what do you think has been some of your, your biggest highlights in your career? You know, Kat, it's, it may seem all glossy and, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, it's glorious for someone, you know, to have achieved or attained things, but it's a challenge. It's a great challenge and... Uh, we have to work through things throughout all our lives to try and better ourselves mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as artists. Um, do I speak about highlights? Are there any? Mm -hmm. Maybe yes, maybe not. But uh, for me, you know I'm from Soweto. You see yourself at the Radio City Music Hall with Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, hey. Cindy Lauper. You're part of that group. Vusi Mashtasela, Josh Groban. And you're on that stage with those artists. What more could you ask That's for? That's incredible. That's incredible. What more could you ask for? Where do you see the state of South African music right now? I, I always say I don't want to be the critic of what happens in South African music. Mm -hmm. Every generation has its own purpose. Young musicians need to find their own space and practice it well mm -hmm. and ensure that the generation after that, you know, must actually emulate what has been the successes of that generation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for me, that is more important. I cannot say that the music has changed because if I look back at what I did as a musician, I think I didn't do exactly the same things as the other people did. Yeah, so yeah. there's this whole evolution in how music or how the arts should uh, uh, you know, present itself to a generation. Tell me about where we can see you performing live, because that's always a highlight. Last, well, last year I was at the Jazz Fest, was well, it this year? And I just popped up on a venue and you were there. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so lucky to be here. So I know a lot of I people mean, would love I, to you see know, you performing I've been so live. privileged that you know, I've been able to perform almost every day, every week, every month, wow. every year. Wow. 50 years down the line. That's incredible. You know, I haven't been to in an intimate venue yeah? for a very long time, for 30 years almost. 
my last performance of as the back at the Baxter. Okay. The Baxter was uh, the most intimate venue that I've ever done in Cape Town for many years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself with my manager, why can't we go back to Baxter? Yeah. And do this very special intimate show. But for me, it's not even about me. Yeah. It's being able to invite some of the younger musicians mm -hmm. who up here at Music Exchange yes. and we discover them. They come from Kalanga, some of them come from all the other areas and say, look, here I am, I'm available, can we do something together? But there's also Tony Cedras, a great South African musician mm -hmm. that I want South Africans to come and experience. Fantastic, and that's happening on the 26th of October, 8pm, yes. one night only at the Baxter Theatre with Ndadisi Pohot Sticks Mabuse and a whole lot of other artists. And you can't wait until you hear that. <laughs> I know you love that song. Yeah, I'm going to make you sing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.